Hey everyone, it's Pastor Steve and Pastor Aaron of That Church and we are grateful that you've tuned in today and please share it with someone else. And look, we are going through chapter 10, uh, 10, 10, 10, <laughs> 10 of 1 Corinthians today, That's right. right? Yes. Okay, yes. so here, let's pray and we'll get right into it. Okay. Okay, so Father, you are awesome and we thank you for blessing us with with all good from you mm -hmm. inside in our spirit man and on the outside you are showing up as our papa and we thank you for it in jesus name amen amen so be it mm -hmm. we look to you lord to hear what you have to say to us and here it is so let's go ahead and uh chapter nine remember don't be a hindrance to the gospel mm -hmm. you follow what the holy spirit tells you to do and here if you're not seeing what you're supposed to do in the word look at jesus that's really good that's that's where you find out yeah. what you you and your ministry is supposed to look like right because we're following him and we're all in the ministry and we're all in the <laughs> ministry right <laughs> all right so yeah. let's get started in chapter 10 verse 1 here okay. we go okay for I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, that our forefathers were all under... I know. Here, I gotta, <laughs> I gotta throw this funny in there. Okay. So often people are saying, you know, you're always supposed to answer people with the word. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, some guy is hassling one of you girls, all you have to say is, I don't want you to be, I, I don't want you ignorant, brother. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> but what I want to point out here is, Far, I do not want you to be ignorant, brother. He doesn't want us walking around in ignorance to what God is really saying out of his word. Right. So pay attention to what he is saying and move along with what he is telling you. Okay? Because when you're ignorant, you don't know what the word says. Mm -hmm. You can be sucked into the lies of the enemy, mm -hmm. believe lies, and live your whole life in a lie. Right. So he's going to straighten some things out here. Make sure we know some things about God. Right. Yeah. So. Okay. Uh, that our forefathers were all under and protected by the cloud in which God's presence went before them. And every one of them passed safely through the Red Sea. And each one of them allowed himself also to be baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. They were thus brought under obligation to the law, to Moses, and to the covenant, consecrated and set apart to the service of God. And so, it says they did that to themselves. They allowed themselves. Yeah. So we're going we're gonna to unpack just a little bit of that. So the Israelites coming out of Egypt were led by Moses, right? Right. Went through the sea. So they saw miracle after miracle. All that w was done to, to show the world. Mm -hmm. It wasn't just showing Egypt. It That's was showing true. the whole world. Right. Because the whole world heard about yeah. what happened to Egypt because God was bringing them out. Right. Right? right and here then goes through through uh the red sea comes out on the other side comes up to mount sinai and here they were moaning and complaining the whole way right so it was was it that you brought us out here were there not enough graves in in egypt, <laughs> in egypt. they were saying all kinds of things that were really in all actuality against everything god was doing right so that wasn't correct, right? And and you see that because here, remember what it said? Um, oh, it's it's in verse six today. Now <laughs> these things are are our examples, is what it says down in six. These are examples for us so we can clearly see we shouldn't be moaning and complaining. Right. Right? But we should be in faith that what God said is gonna happen. And here, you hold to God. You hold on to him and his word. And you look.
look for our that to come to pass, just like Abraham. Abraham had faith, and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Mm -hmm. And the righteousness was never to come through the law. And that's what they, they said. So here, they came up to the, to the Mount Sinai, and God said, All right, Moses, I want to speak to everyone. And here, it sounded to them as a booming, thunder. loud thunder, whatever. Yeah. And they were like, whoa, 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 whoa. I know it's Steve's translation, <laughs> but whoa, whoa, whoa. Moses, you hear God, and we will see to it that we will do what you say he said to do. Which started their acts of works. Works. Not faith. Right. So they were seeing to it. Do you understand? And that's what he said. It went through this step-by-step -step thing. They were baptized into this whole thing and seeing all this stuff that God did. And here, he's going to even keep on going. And they drank from the spiritual rock. They, they did this. They did that. Mm -hmm. All these miracles. And did those miracles do it for them? No, it didn't. Because they weren't mixing it with faith right and right. that's that's what it says several places in the word and it says they didn't receive because they weren't mixing it with faith and that's where you have to mix it with faith you see the people that did mix it with faith in hebrews 11 as the champions of faith yep. right yep. and all through jesus's ministry you see that same thing happening the woman with the issue of blood uh, the Syrophoenician woman, like we talked about yesterday, and many, many more, they put their trust in the covenant and had faith in the one that was to come. And because of that faith, they then received. Right? Okay. So let's, let's keep on going, and you're going to see how this starts opening up. But I wanted you to have those thoughts that... They went into a, 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 a works mentality, and it's not the way you were supposed to receive anything from the Lord, right? And that's what messed it all up for them. But here, the law kept them in that schoolmaster type setting mm -hmm. till the one was to come. And here, did it work for them? And did it work for their children? No, it kept on going for generation and generation until Jesus came. And then he started straightening it all back out again, right? Bring in the word of the kingdom. All right, go ahead. Verse 3, And all of them ate the same spiritual, supernaturally given food. And they all drank the same spiritual, supernaturally given drink. For they drank from a spiritual rock which followed them. Produced by the sole power of God himself without natural instrumentality. And the rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with the great majority of them, for they were overthrown and strewn along the ground in the wilderness. Now these things are examples, warnings, and admonitions for us, not to desire or crave or covet or lust after evil and carnal things as they did. Do not be worshipers of false gods as some of them were, as it is written. The people sat down to eat and drink the sacrifices offered to the golden calf at Horeb and rose to sport, to dance and give way to jesting and hilarity. So I want you to point out something that was right there afterwards. That, that all that took place, right. they were doing things by works. Mm -hmm. And that was not by faith that right. they were intended to be doing it by, right? right? They had the, the patriarch Abraham as their father. And here, even in Jesus' day, they said, we've got, we've got you know, Moses and Abraham as our father. And he was like, your father is not <laughs> these. Because Abraham did it a total different way than what you guys are doing. Right? Because they were doing, they were making sure they were washing the outside of the pots. Making sure they're doing everything mm -hmm. in works. And it's not to be in works. It was intended always to be done by faith. 
Right. right. And it says in the word in Romans, it's impossible to please God without faith. Right. Yeah. And they were looking to themselves, looking to their works, putting putting their what they could do ahead of what God's mm -hmm. grace can do in their life. And, and just what was said, you know, they they took a whole bunch of gold, put it together and put it into the fire and it came out a calf. It just came out a calf. We didn't do nothing. No. And God's supposed to believe that. <laughs> God knows all things. And, and couldn't, he, they wouldn't work with him. But they wanted, it was too hard to keep themselves in a place of belief and to put out these things from their midst, their th thinking. All these thoughts that were coming to them from other sources that, oh man, they got this so easy. This, this group of people got it so easy. You know, they can do all these lustful things in their temple worship. Well, all this other stuff was entering in and it was drawing them away. Why are you drawn away? Because you're you're drawn away by your lusts, mm -hmm. lusting after other things other than God. Right. And they were supposed to be lusting after God. I know, I use that word in, in that same thing, but it's the same thing. Focus worship right. and yeah. adoration, right? Letting those thoughts consume you. Right. And yeah. you're supposed to do that same thing. Renewing of the heart is those things. And here, it, the Bible speaks to that, that we're to renew our minds. That's our, our, it's part of our soul. Our soul is made up of our mind, our will, and our emotions. When we renew our minds, we make decisions, which become right. our will right and that's your will to life so let's get back to reading god's will and testament right <laughs> we must not gratify evil desire and indulge in immorality as some of them did and twenty-three thousand suddenly fell dead in a single day and why because they're doing it by works and they're being led away by not renewing their minds mm -hmm. Okay. We should not tempt the Lord, try his patience, become a trial to him, critically appraise him, and exploit his goodness as some of them did, and were killed by poisonous serpents. I, I want you to get this. I, I keep saying this different ways just so you get it. But it's like being the bouncer, like I've said before. Yep. At every thought that comes by in your thinking, you have to take those thoughts captive and say, what are you doing here? No, we're not having any of that because God said this. You combat thoughts with words. You have to speak words just like Jesus did. He had those thoughts bombarding him while he was in the, you know, the place of temptation, right? Yep. And here he spoke the words out his mouth and they superseded all that the enemy was trying to do and did away with it all right right okay verse 10 nor discontentedly complain as some of them did and were put out of the way entirely by the destroyer death now these things befell them by way of a figure as an example and warning to us they were written to admonish and fit us for right action by good instruction we in whose days the ages have reached the climax, their consummation and concluding period. Therefore, let anyone who thinks he stands, who feels sure that he has a steadfast mind and is standing firm, take, take heed lest he fall into sin. For no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you, that is not common to man. That is... So, he's saying there are some great things. That no temptation or trial, no trial, regarded as enticing to sin. Isn't that what we were just talking about? Being drawn away by your lusts? Yeah. Right? And, and here he's saying, for there's no temptation that is going to come to you. Like, there's no temptation that would be there for... Uh, uh, a supernatural being is not going to come to you because you're in this body of flesh. 
the only way you're going to be tempted is the way people have been tempted for thousands and thousands right. and thousands of years, right? Right. And so all of it is normal and natural to you. So you're, you're, don't think something strange has happened to you. Remember, they've said that, you know, we, we hear this from Paul. Don't think some strange thing has happened to you, right? But always consider that the Holy Spirit's right there, and he's not. Did, did we get we to? We didn't get to finish. Okay, it. you're That's right. Stopped you ahead of, ahead of time. All right, we'll get into I'll I'll stop after this next couple of verses here. All right. No, no temptation, no trial regarded as enticing to sin, no matter how it comes or where it leads, has overtaken you and laid hold on you that is not common to man. That is, no temptation or trial has come to you that is beyond human resistance and that is not adjusted and adapted and belonging to human experience and such as man can bear. But God is faithful to his word and to his compassionate nature, and he can be trusted not to let you be tempted and tried and assayed beyond your ability and strength of resistance and power to endure. But with the temptation, he will always also provide the way out, the means of escape to a landing place that you may be capable and strong and powerful to bear up under it patiently. Okay, go ahead. No, no, I want you to answer. Okay, and say that. well, <laughs> what, what he's saying here is when the temptation comes, first of all, it's not coming from God. So you've got to you've got to recognize the source of that trial that's coming in. And God's the source of all good things. It says in John 10, he comes to give us life and to give us life more abundantly. It's the enemy that comes to kill, steal and destroy that brings those trials and temptations to you. But God's faithful and he's going to make a way out for you, a way of escape. And he's already bore the sicknesses that could come on you. He's already bore those pains. He's already bore those griefs and those sorrows. So you put your trust in God and, and you don't blame him for bringing those. It's like, it just doesn't make any sense. And you rebuke the devourer, <laughs> you rebuke the devout, the devil and you thank God for helping you and getting you out of that trial. He's faithful. And in all of that, it's, it is that point to where we are holding ourselves up as as per se unto God right and and we're we've been through some things depending on when you came into the kingdom did you come in as a child did you come in at, at 99 wherever it was in between there you are coming into the kingdom and you've got stuff that you're used to doing it that way Maybe you were led into sin in certain ways. Those are customary, are, are common to you. Right. And those things are still going to keep coming up until you deal with them. And each time you deal with them, it's going to get less. And it's going to get less. And it may go away. And you'll be like, glory to God, I'm free. <laughs> and then a couple months later, when you're not ex expecting it, the devil will come in and jab you with it. But it'll be from outside of you. At that point, it'll be from the outside. But don't take it and say, oh, see, I thought I was over that. And as soon as you start taking those words, you're taking it back in. You don't take those words by saying them. Those are thoughts. You've got to be that bouncer. No, you don't. Come in here and you get sharper and sharper with the enemy. Right. Right. You know, as those thoughts start to come, you can come against them and, and cut them like a, with a sword as, as if with your words so sharply that it, it blows it right out of the way. Think of it as when um, Oral Roberts, this was the thought that kind of came up to me as I was saying that Oral Roberts would come up and you know go to pray for somebody and then it would sound like a, the roar of of the lion of the tribe of Judah came and Wah! you know and and that's the driving out 
those evil spirits from people. That's the driving out those evil sickness and, and lust and all the other junk that could take hold of people and he'll drive it out from you, right? Not so much Oral Roberts, but it was the Holy Spirit working with yes. Oral Roberts, right. working with you, doing the same thing. But you have to stand up and take your place of authority. Remember, Jesus said, all power and authority has, has been given unto me. Now you go. Well, that was your commissioning. Yep. As soon as you take that as your commissioning, you are commissioned to go. And equipped and supplied for. <laughs> the equipping comes as that Holy Spirit comes upon you. You, you take all the gifts that God has given you and move along with him and he'll train you how to use them. Right? Okay, let's get back there. Therefore, my dearly beloved, shun, keep clear away from, avoid by flight if need be, any sort of idolatry of loving or venerating anything more than God. I am speaking as to intelligent, sensible men. Think over and make up your minds for yourselves about what to say, about what I say. I appeal to your reason and your discernment in these matters. The cup of blessing of wine at the Lord's Supper upon which we ask God's blessing, does it not mean that in drinking it we participate in and share a fellowship, a communion in the blood of Christ the Messiah? The bread which we break, does it not mean that in eating it we participate in and share a fellowship, a communion in the body of Christ? For we, no matter how numerous we are, are one body, because we all partake of the one bread, the one whom the communion bread represents. Consider those physically people in Israel. Are not those who eat the sacrifices partners of the altar united in their worship of the same God? What do I imply then? That food offered to idols is intrinsically changed by the fact and amounts to anything or that an idol itself is a living thing? No. I'm suggesting that what the pagans sacrifice, they offer in effect to demons, to evil spiritual powers, and not to God at all. I do not want you to fellowship and be partners with diabolical spirits by eating at their feasts. You cannot drink the Lord's cup and the demon's cup. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the demon's table. Shall we thus provoke the Lord to jealousy and anger and indignation? Are we stronger than he that we should defy him? All things are legitimate, permissible, and we are free to do anything we please. But not all things are helpful, expedient, profitable, and wholesome. All things are legitimate, but not all things are constructive to character and edifying to spiritual life. You know, all things that he's referring to are, are well, we have freedom, we can do these things, but they don't help your brother. And it's not just about you, it's about... And he's talked about this in the last few chapters. You know, don't do something that's going to make your brother trip up or fall or become weak. You know, so don't don't take your liberty and just do whatever, but be thoughtful of your neighbor, your friend, and your family member. And remember, we're linked together. So what happens to you affects the person that you're linked to. Yeah. Which is the whole body of Christ. If your little toe gets mashed... <laughs> and mm -hmm. hurt it's, it seems like it's the it's the the <laughs> most important yep. part of the whole body yep. at that moment yep. and everything is is doing something con concerning it right yeah so that same thing applies in the body of christ you do what is going to help your brother not what's going to hurt your brother right okay let no one then seek his own good and advantage and profit, but rather each one of the other let him seek the welfare of his neighbor. As to meat offered to idols, eat anything that is sold in the meat market without raising any question or investigating on the grounds of conscientious scruples. For the whole earth is the Lord's and everything that is in it. In case one of the unbelievers invites you to a meal and you want to go, Eat whatever is served to you without examining into its source because of conscientious scruples. But if someone tells you, this has been offered in sacrifice to an idol, do not eat it out of consideration for the person who informed you and for conscience's sake. 
I mean for the sake of his conscience, not yours. Do not eat it. For why should another man's scruples apply to me and my liberty of action be determined by his conscience? If I partake of my food with thankfulness, why am I accused and spoken evil of because of that for which I give thanks? So then whether you eat or drink or whatever you may do, do all for the honor and glory of God. Do not let yourselves be hindrances by giving an offense to the Jews or to the Greeks or to the church of God. Do not lead others into sin by your mode of life. Just as I myself strive to please, to accommodate myself to the opinions, desires, and interests of others, adapting myself to all men and everything I do, not aiming at or considering my own profit and advantage, but that of the many, in order that they may be saved. Now, wasn't that good? He, he really broke down certain things for us. Yeah. Just to, to make it clear, he's talking about loving your brother. Right. Really, right? And as we go through life, what are we to do? Love. Walk in love, right? right. That was the command to the church. Love your brother as yourself. Right. Love the Father, the Lord, God Almighty, with all your might, right? Yeah. And seek Him. And in all of this, we're following the Holy Spirit and, and keeping our focus and our gaze on Jesus, watching how He moved in His ministry. Mm -hmm. And as the Holy Spirit brings those remembrances up to you, that you walk your ministry out that same way. You're in a ministry. Right. Right. You are called. You got called. You, you received his call. You received those thoughts he put into you by his spirit. And it confirmed, was confirming of those words that you heard. Right? That's how you got born again. You received his thoughts. So keep receiving his thoughts. Right. Keep listening. And put off those other things. Those, those other things that are trying to trip you up. You know, the lust of the flesh, the, the pride of life. And the lust of the eyes. And the lust of the eyes. So watch. Watch what you're letting in and keep those other things out. Remember? All right. So the thing we want you to remember that God, God loves you, you and we, we love, love you and, and Jesus, Jesus is Lord. Now take your place as you take his anointing to, to your, your world. world. Bye bye. bye.